Tampa Bay Water is charged with providing safe, potable drinking water to 2.3 million people in the Tampa Bay region. We pump anywhere from 160 to over 200 million gallons a day. In any given decade, we can expect to have one, perhaps two years of very dry weather. Dry periods or drought returns to Florida on a regular basis. What keeps me up at night is the unpredictability of surface water in the future. This is our regional reservoir. This is where we store 15 and a half billion gallons of surface water. We're in fact standing on the tower, which is where we deliver water into the reservoir and where we would draw water out of the reservoir. Without this reservoir system, we would not be able to rely on river flows to offset groundwater pumpage in this area because the rivers are very seasonal. We have high river flows in the summertime when our rains occur and we can't take water out of the rivers in the winter and the fall because the river flows are too low. We pay a lot of attention to what is happening with uh, sea surface temperatures and whether we're entering a La Nina or an El Nino period and whether or not we have to be more reliant upon desalinated water or groundwater rather than surface water in the coming months or year. ENSO is the El Nino, La Nina pattern of changes in sea surface temperature that happens in the Pacific Ocean and makes its way all the way across over to Florida. It has a very strong influence on the amount of rain that we receive, particularly in the fall, winter, and spring time of the year. And the ENSO forecast is an outstanding tool to allow us to adapt. An ENSO forecast is a probabilistic forecast as to how likely either El Nino or La Nina will develop over the next roughly three to six month period. Typically with La Nina, we see drier than average conditions across the southern part of the U.S., including Florida. That prediction last October was for a La Nina condition, much, much drier for us as we went through the fall, winter, and spring. It was a classic La Nina, and so the prediction you know, was spot on. I don't think I've ever seen it quite this dry before. Well, we are in a La Nina climate pattern, which would indicate we were going to have a very dry winter and spring. Mm -hmm. But we still have some, you know, standing water, which is good. This is natural. You're in a drought, but the deepest part of the wetland is still wet, and we still have some standing water for the wildlife. And uh, so that's good. As long as we get a normal rainy season, you know, we should be in good shape. We have the latest ENSO forecast from mid-August. All the models, especially the dynamical models, are forecasting the ENSO state to be an El Nino conditions for the coming winter. The El Nino condition is a warming of the Pacific uh, Ocean, and that condition creates an opportunity for additional rain and cool weather for us in the wintertime climate forecasts are probabilistic. Historically, if we're looking over Florida, El Nino is generally about an 80% shot, so certainly a pretty good chance of it being wetter than average, but by no means a certainty. If you continue to use it year after year, you, you should certainly come out ahead. Normally our winter time is very dry, so if we get above average rainfall means then we'll have our demand will be smaller, uh, and then at the same time we'll get uh, stream flows. This is really going to help our, um, our planning for the fall and the winter and early spring. Here in the state of Florida, we live typically in a, a wet hydrologic condition. But we have tools available to let us know how or what's causing these conditions to change and when these conditions are going to change. Everybody doesn't have to wake up you know, each day going, I didn't know it was going to be like this, whatever this is. There are ways that, that you can better understand that this is how your environment is and what you can do to learn to live within that environment and not fight that environment. And we can all be I think happier living like that.